until I saw the wall of cliffs. I thought, oh yeah, right, I'll be jumping off that then, won't I? <laughs> I'm Lucy Cook, and I love freaks. I am immune to cute. I do whatever it takes to seek out the world's strangest ouch, creatures ouch, ow. in the wildest places. I'm on a mission to show you why nature's oddballs are truly the most amazing animals on Earth. Every year, Eight million tourists flock to South Africa to catch a glimpse of the animal world's superstars. The so-called Big Five. But I don't see why they should get all the attention. So I'm here to seek out the ugly, the weird and the overlooked. My very own Odd Five. <laughs> They're animals so bizarre that their strange looks and habits are getting them into trouble. Yet their freaky stories are rarely heard. Maybe that's because they've got some rather challenging personal habits. Like vultures that feast on dead and sometimes decomposing bodies. That's half a cow. It's, it's a little bit smelly as well, I should add. But this gruesome diet is now killing some Cape vultures. Look at the wingspan on that! They're being accidentally poisoned. This couple takes in the victims and nurses them back to health. Here we go. Dinner time. Don't be alarmed if a whole bunch of vultures do come up to you. Okay. Okay. So they do bite. If the birds are going to grab you, the first thing they're going to do is your eyes. So I have to wear sunglasses and a cap to protect my eyes from being pecked out. But other than that, apparently they're very friendly. Carry on walking. I love all the argy-bargy. Hissing and strutting and posturing. Just careful, careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's just had a finger. <laughs> that is not for tea. Ayla over there, her speciality is to go in and quickly grab the liver. She loves the liver. Really? Just like Hannibal Lecter? <laughs> It's pretty obvious now why they have a bald head. It's just it's to keep them clean when they're when they're eating. Exactly. Yeah. They're actually very clean. They are every time they eat, they go and bath afterwards. They're a bunch of neat freaks. And they make life safer for everyone else. There could be anthrax, botulism, all sorts of nasties in that carcass. 
And they don't get sick because they've got such an acidic stomach that their poo is a disinfectant. Theoretically, you could eat after a vulture's pooped on your hand. I'm not quite sure I'll do it. You've got to practice what you preach. You can't go around telling everybody they can use vulture poo as disinfectant and not have tried it yourself. <laughs> That's a theory. <laughs> The bird's stomach acid counteracts natural poisons, but not man-made ones. And that's the problem for many of these birds. A lot of farmers lace carcasses with poison in the hope of getting rid of problem animals like jackals or caracals or cheetahs. Mm -hmm. And vultures are the ones that end up locating the carcass. Now, after eight months of rehab, two lucky birds are ready to return to the wild. We're going to go and try and catch a vulture. We are after that bird right in the middle. OK. The yeah. Now we'll have a good idea how he flies. Here Check he goes. His flying. His flying looks OK. So I'll walk towards this way. Lucy, if maybe you walk close to the perch. OK. Quite a small guy. Do you want to try and grab him? All right. From that way. That's okay. It, yeah. And the, the most important part is not to let go of the head. <laughs> that's that's the number one. Number one. Don't let go of the head. They're very wriggly. So just very wriggly. Okay. I've got hold of it. Wow. It is wriggly, isn't it? Hold Whoa! Her. It's so wriggly. Yeah. Okay. Hold her. You're gonna hold it up against your chest. I'm gonna try some. Like and My hands are quite small. Keep his head away from your face. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. You, now you're gonna hug him. So I'm gonna pass him to you. You're gonna kind of hug him. Okay. Are you okay then? Yeah, just. Whoa, he's strong. Okay. Have vulture will travel. <laughs> we take our birds to a spot where they can join other Cape vultures in one of the last surviving colonies. These birds only live in southern Africa. Let's give these birds their freedom then. Cool. Here you go. <laughs> time to go. We there did. you go. Look, it's time to be free. <laughs> <laughs> this whole area, it's all for you again. I can't really believe it. <laughs> no. <laughs> there we go. straight off and heading for home. While many vultures nest in trees, Cape vultures are particular. He's heading straight for the cliffs. They only nest on high cliffs like these. And there's only one way I can see how they do it. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> I didn't feel nervous until I saw the wall of cliffs. I thought, oh, yeah, right, I'll be jumping off that then, won't I? Just about to jump off a cliff. What do you get me into? That's Phil, my intrepid producer. Oopa. Whoa! Oh, my word! Oh, my God! <laughs> They've gone, and there's two vultures. What people know about vultures is that they're fantastically ugly, but what people don't really know is that they're the world's highest flying bird. And in fact, one vulture even crashed into a jet at 37,000 feet. I'm hoping we don't have to go that high. <laughs> we won't be going that high, will we? No, not today. You promise? OK. <laughs> Paragliding reveals how surprisingly curious and social the vultures are. You can see the birds coming out and joining yeah. them already. Oh, wow. They get to know you and they, they actually enjoy flying with you, so they'll follow you around. So sort of play with you? Yeah. 
combination of nervousness and excitement, the likes of which I haven't had ever, I don't think. All right, we're gonna go. Okay. And let's go. And run. Run. Yeah. Oh. All right, well, <laughs> how does that feel? <laughs> oh, my knuckles are white. It's incredible, though. And there are the vultures. Oh, my word. Wow, they are all around us. And they do seem like they're hanging around with us, enjoying the ride. This is how you should see them to appreciate their beauty. And their extraordinary skills. So this is the perfect introduction to South Africa. South Africa is made up of all sorts of different micro-terrains, each with their own peculiar creatures. These cliffs are one of those unique hotspots. I can see right over the cliff where they're nesting now. It's 25% of the world's cape vultures are nesting in these cliffs. Vultures are paying a high price for their taste for dead flesh. And now, even their keen eyesight is getting them in trouble. A threat I want to know more about. There's a big Mooty market here. Mooty is traditional medicine. And apparently, vultures are a popular ingredient. There's everything here, actually. There's a lot of herbs and plants and then just a lot of unidentifiable bits of animal. Oh, this is a big snake. Python. It's a python. Is that a cheetah or a leopard? Yeah, Here you've got a whole baboon. Yes, that's what... You've got a lot of stuff, haven't you? Yeah, we have a lot of stuff. This is the wheels for the for a vulture. That's a wing of a vulture? Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. What's your best stuff? What's your what's your biggest seller? Vulture brains. People want vulture brains. That's yeah. the big seller, is it? Yeah. yeah. How to use and this one? You can make powder. Yeah. And then you can put it. Yeah. And okay. then you can smell. It helps so you can see to the future, you can see what's coming, and they can give you this to open up your mind. Dimmy was once a student of all of this, and I've asked her to be my guide. Also, it's good for gamblers. Yeah, it's good for the lotto. The lotto yeah. number. The lotto number. Right. Okay. As if it wasn't bad enough that they got farmers poisoning them, they're also getting their brains sniffed in order to win the lotto. The belief is that the traits of the animals transfer to the buyers. The vulture's got amazing eyesight and makes you be able to sort of see into the future. Dimi, can you help me? Does he understand that the vultures are in danger? But it's the Chakma baboon's brain power that gets him in trouble. They can work together in raiding parties of as many as a hundred. Not the kind of creature you want to come home to. Unless you're this guy. Yeah, the death one looks like he's really quite pleased to see me. The penal display. Just go inside. Go inside? Yeah. Okay, all right. Hello, guys. Matthew and I are becoming friends, aren't we, Matthew? Yeah? Look at you, like, you like what you see? When baboons clash with humans, Bob rescues them. Hey. You are a naughty baboon. Yeah, you are a naughty baboon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've only just met Bob, but he seems to be half baboon himself. I've been prepped on. Oh, God. Once you're back home, you're going to miss the smell. Really? Do you know what, Bob? I, I struggle to believe that. <laughs> <laughs>
So where did these babies come from? Matthew had been saved from a tribal medicinal trade. Others were orphaned when their mothers were shot. They've had a narrow escape, haven't they? Today, many of Bob's baboons are supposed to go back to the wild. But it's something he's never tried to do before. I'm going to help relocate almost 20 baboons. It's an event Bob has worked towards for decades as he's learned to forge rescued animals into one cohesive troop. It's a massive day for Bob today. Like a sort of baboon wizard, he's collected a group of unloved baboons that have all come from different horrific situations and rehabilitated them here. And today's the day that we're going to dart them and move them to their new enclosure. It's the final step before these exceptionally smart animals are released for good. Oh, here they are. Wow. Look at these eyebrows now. Yeah, his eyebrows are wagging up and down. Yeah, we believe that they are real um, psychological experts. Make eye contact and they can reach your soul. Scary prospect. <laughs> <laughs> Baboons are very social, but creating a troop from scratch is not easy. You need the right mix. After years of trial and error, Bob's finally found it. Just recently, this group has come together to raise their newest member. There she's now there. You can see her there oh, with a the baby. You can see Daisy with yeah. the baby, yeah. When she came in, she was exactly the size of a baby. No, yes. really? Yeah, now she's going to be... I want to cry. I was yes. going to say, Paul. She's going to be released now with her own baby. Oh, that's amazing. It's going to be an intense day. Now we have to outsmart them. Easier said than done. Know that they're very intelligent. Mm. They will know quickly what we're up to. And you must be alert. They are potentially very dangerous animals. OK. I feel quite nervous, actually, because these are big animals. We don't want things to go wrong. First, we lure the animals into a smaller enclosure to sedate them. It's great. Look at that. Look at that. It's great. Is he going to go in? Looks like I've got a shoulder. He's gone in. One of the lead males that we really wanted to get into the cage early on. We've got him in the cage. Then we get Daisy and the baby. Come on, two more, two more, just two more. Two more. Okay. There you go. Got it? Yeah. Right. We've managed you to get eight. Eight. You got eight. Yeah. He's so jittery about seeing a gun, mm. you know, because um, they've been shot at so many times. And... Mm. Some farmers here shoot to kill any baboon they spot on their property. We want to capture the big male first, or he could make things more difficult. Go for it. Baboons are known to form really strong friendships. I think it's very sweet the way they're all cuddled up next to each other to go to sleep. OK, so now they're under. It's safe for us to go in. To get to the sedated animals, the team has to enter the larger pen, where the rest of the troop is anxiously watching. We're going to get them out as soon as possible. But stand by, Lucy. If something happens, you must pull at the door. OK. okay. <laughs> Hear that? The minute that the baby starts crying, they will... Oh, they can tell something's going on. Yeah, they're going crazy because it's the baby. Now with the baby making the sounds, then we must take them out immediately. I've got it, yeah, OK. <laughs> We 
take away their leader and the troop really goes berserk. Once strangers, these baboons will now do anything to protect one another. And that includes taking us on. It takes half a day, but we manage to sedate the troop. Ooh. OK, there you go, Bob. Yeah, go. Yeah, go. Yeah, OK. <sighs> He's left. Left a message behind. Okay, um, Each gets a thorough medical checkup to make sure it's healthy enough to survive in the wild. It's a lot softer than you'd expect, given that they walk on their hands all day long. Baboons have evolved to forage on the ground because of Southern Africa's lack of forest. Some think that's also why they have such huge canines, to fend off predators. Whoa, okay, look at that. This is for the canine. To feel the back part of it, yeah. I can feel that. Behind that tooth is razor okay. sharp. Uh, wow. Can you hold it, please? Oh, my word. You got it? Yeah, I got him, yeah. OK. At last, they're ready to go. So we're putting the baboons in these boxes so that they can be easily transported to the site where we're going to release them. What's going on, eh? You and Mum are going to wake up somewhere completely new and then you're going to be wild. You're going to grow up to be a wild baboon. Yeah, that is... Right. Well done. First stage. All good. good. Bob has found the baboons a home on a nature reserve 80 kilometres from the nearest town. This is the new home. Have you chosen baboon heaven? Absolutely. This is the ultimate baboon habitat. Yeah. We need to make sure the baboons will stay together. So we'll first release them into a temporary electrified enclosure. That's just so that they get used to this area and stay as a group. And then, after a couple of weeks, they'll turn the electricity off, build some bridges so that they can then expand beyond the fence, and then eventually the fences will come down, and it'll just be them in the wilderness. Here comes the big boy. <laughs> Look at them pulling in the pipe. <laughs> the baboon's got hold of the pipe. <laughs> 19 baboons in these boxes that would have died or led some horrible, grim existence as pets. And they are about to have their first taste of freedom. And everybody's very excited. No one here has ever done this before. We've got Daisy and the baby in here, and they're going to go in first. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Here comes Daisy, guys. Here comes Daisy. Woo! There she goes. They're kind of looking around like, what the hell happened there? Three, two, one. Look at that. <sighs> Emotion is running very high. Yeah. There you go. Yes, look at that. These ones are lively. It's not just the humans who are emotional. The baboons in there can see that there are other baboons that are free on the other side, so it's all getting a lot more exciting now. Wait, wait, there's a baboon coming. Oh, very quick, very quick, 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 quick. We released the entire troop without a hitch. Two more happy customers. Well, almost the entire troop. He's not going quietly. We've got to get Matthew out. Whoa! Whoa! Are you ready, guys? This is the alpha. Look at that. He's the last one. The last one to go out. Yeah. Look at that side, Lucy. Look at them. They are all happy. They're really happy, aren't they? All the talking going on there. It's like the first step into the big world. Yeah. A new world for them, a new experience and freedom. 
Everybody thinks their society is based on aggression, but it just isn't, is it? It's not. It's not. It's about kids. This is a group of animals that come from as far as a thousand kilometers away from each other, and yet they form this incredibly tight family group now, and they'll do anything to protect each other. Oh, it's hard. You can't not be moved by this, can you? You know, it's like, it's an amazing, amazing moment. To survive in the bush, these baboons will need every bit of their extraordinary ingenuity. But here, they'll be far away from the human influence that turns their strange asset into a liability. Like the rest of South Africa's Freaky Five, their oddness works in this wilderness. And it's here we can see they're all as wonderful as they are weird.